Greetings, JC here for Interface. This time around we're going to talk about audio lines and cables. We'll talk about balanced versus unbalanced lines, standard line levels, what is phantom power, and we'll look at some of the typical audio connectors you'll run across in both home and professional audio gear. To start, let's talk about balanced versus unbalanced lines and exactly what that means. If you've spent any time around a professional audio installation like a recording studio or a broadcast station or even a large live sound setup, you've probably heard the term balanced line. Well, what this means is that a typical balanced cable contains two identical wires which are twisted together and then wrapped with a third conductor. Now that can be foil or braided wire that acts as a shield. The term balanced comes from the method of connecting each wire to identical impedances at source and load. Okay, so what does that mean? Here's a graphic that shows exactly what's going on inside a balanced line. At the sending end of a balanced line, the audio is sent down two conductors simultaneously. However, one conductor carries that signal 180 degrees out of phase. At the receiving end, these two signals are combined in such a way that they add to one another. Any noise that has been induced on the line, like hum or interference, is automatically canceled out and the signal strength is actually increased. Now, if you didn't quite understand what I just told you, there's a lot of great reference material online that explains exactly what's going on inside a balanced line. It's actually a very complicated and deep subject. However, what you need to understand is that noise that is induced on the line is automatically canceled out. In an unbalanced line, you have a single conductor carrying the audio. Therefore, any noise or any hiss or hum that gets induced on that line is mixed with the audio at the receiving end. Here's a great illustration of what an unbalanced line looks like. In this particular illustration, we're looking at heavy cable that's used to hook antennas to two-way radio systems like ham radio, CBs, and things like that. However, the principle is exactly the same for the cables that you use to connect your stereo receiver to your CD player. You have a center conductor with some insulation around it and a shield. That's it. Since there's only one center conductor, it's obvious that any noise induced on that line will be fed right into the receiving end. XLR connectors are preferred in balanced audio setups, especially for microphones. These have been around since the late 50s. Sometimes you'll hear them referred to as Canon plugs because the engineer that designed them, his last name was Canon. You'll notice that there are three pins in each plug, and that is for your high side, your low side, and your shield. Another connector that's become popular for balanced systems is a tip ring sleeve connector, which is simply a phone connector that has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve, each connected to a different conductor in the cable. It's worth the time to take a moment and talk about the phone connector. It is the oldest of the audio connectors dating back over a hundred years when it was used in telephone switchboards. Phone plugs for audio come in a couple of configurations these days. At the bottom of this graphic you see the standard unbalanced tip sleeve phone plug. Some people refer to this as an instrument plug or a mono plug. And all it is basically is a conductor with a sleeve around it and it connects to the cable in an unbalanced fashion. The top connector you see here is a tip ring sleeve connector and this causes a lot of confusion because there are several different applications for the same cable. In an unbalanced system the tip is the high side, the ring is the low side, and the sleeve is the shield. However, these cables can also be used to carry two unbalanced audio channels, like for headphones or the mini 1 8 inch phone plugs that you use to plug into the back of your computer. In a balanced audio system, these are used to carry a balanced line, and in an unbalanced system, they're normally used to carry a stereo signal with two separate signals down the same cable. The 1 8 inch or mini phone plug is very popular today for portable devices, PC sound cards, and lots of other audio applications. 
Of course, you can always get an adapter to adapt a 1 8 inch mini phone plug to a standard quarter inch phone plug. The RCA or phono plug is very familiar to anyone who is an audio enthusiast. These are also sometimes called pin connectors. They were introduced by RCA around 1940 for plugging turntables into amplifiers, and they've been doing that ever since. They've also been adapted for carrying audio to and from tape decks, plugging in CD players, they can even carry video, and in some lower-end amplifiers, they can also carry audio to loudspeakers. RCA connectors are used in small unbalanced systems like you'd find at home. So what do you do if you have to take a piece of equipment that's designed for an unbalanced system like a home type cassette deck or CD player and integrate that into a balanced system like you would find in a recording studio, a radio station, or a large live sound setup? Well, one of the ways that you can do that is use this little device here. This is a Henry Matchbox and it is designed for taking home type audio equipment and integrating it into a broadcast or recording studio environment. It bridges the gap in level and impedance between balanced and unbalanced lines. A matchbox is a great solution for a permanent installation. However, if you're building a studio in your home for recording music or voiceovers or whatever, you might not need to invest in a matchbox because many modern small project studio boards, such as this Mackie, allow you to plug both balanced and unbalanced audio equipment into the board. It just depends on which plug you use and which level you select. This leads us to one more thing we need to talk about, which is phantom power. What is it, and what is it used for? Phantom power is provided by some audio mixers and microphone preamps for specialized microphones that use a capacitor to convert the mechanical energy of the vibrations in the air into electrical energy, which becomes an audio signal. To function properly, the circuitry in these microphones needs a DC voltage, and the phantom power provides that DC voltage down the audio cable where the audio signal is coming back from the microphone. That's why it's called phantom power. These microphones are called condenser microphones. Condenser is just another word for capacitor. When talking about audio systems and audio lines, it's not just enough to know whether it's a balanced line or an unbalanced line, or what connector you need to use to hook it into your system. It's also important to take account the standard line levels that different systems use. In this illustration, we're using a scale called DBU. Zero DBU is defined as being enough voltage to create one milliwatt worth of power across a 600 ohm load. That works out to be roughly 0.7746 volts measured RMS. That would be if you were sending like a one kilohertz sine wave down the line, you would need that much voltage to generate one milliwatt of power. Generally speaking, starting from top to bottom, Telephone systems and broadcast stations tend to use plus 8 dBm as a reference level. Broadcast stations used to be entirely wired up at plus 8, but today it's uh, common to find the studios being wired up for plus 4, which is a level that's used in recording studios and live sound reinforcement. And then the actual equipment that interfaces the audio into the transmitter or down the phone line or microwave link that's used to connect the studio to the transmitter, that will operate at plus eight. Moving on down the scale, you'll see that home audio equipment, PC sound cards, and many portable devices that offer a line level output use minus 10 dBV as the uh, actual reference level. Moving on down the scales, magnetic phono cartridges put out a uh, level that's somewhere around minus 35 dBV, and microphones of all types are anywhere between minus 40 and minus 60. Obviously, phono cartridges and microphones need special amplification. When bridging the gap between a 
professional piece of equipment and a home type piece of equipment, sometimes you can deal with the levels without using a matchbox. Many professional pieces of equipment have output level attenuators that allow you to adjust uh, depending on what system you're operating them in. So therefore, if you're handy with a soldering iron, you may be able to make up some special cables that connect the balanced XLR or TRS connectors to RCA or mono TS phone plugs to integrate it into your low-level system. It depends on exactly what sort of equipment you're using. You're going to have to check the documentation for that. And if you run into a particularly old piece of equipment, the only solution might be A, experimentation. And if that doesn't work, you might have to actually go get yourself a matchbox. I hope this video helps to shed some light on audio connections and audio lines. It really is just a brief introduction. There's a lot more to the subject. Fortunately, while I was doing the research for this video, I found that there's plenty of great information available on the web. So whatever challenges you're facing in your system, I'm sure that your favorite search engine will bring you some useful information. For Interface, I'm JC.